Hi guys, it's Cindy Lynn with my Inky Fingers. Thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel and blog. For today's card, we're going to do reverse embossing. Now, if you saw my last video, I did a reverse emboss with the same stamp set, actually. And I loved the effect that came when I did the reverse embossing. But I ended up cutting it all out and I didn't leave it on the card. So I figured today I wanted to challenge myself to do a one-layer card and leave that reverse embossing effect on there. I also figured that I would show you what I do before I make a card. So I have a sketchbook and I drew out a little sketch there and I've got all of this stuff all over the table. Um, I take out my ink pads and I take out my stamps and I kind of move them around on the paper or my workspace. So there is my sketch and then I took out the uh, rectangle die and laid it on the cardstock there and just kind of laid everything around just to see how my color palette was going to look, how the layout was going to look, and where I was going to go with this card. So as I said earlier, I did use the same stamp set from yesterday, which is the Parisian Beauty. I love Paris, and I love this set, so I may use it quite a bit in the near future. I also used the Painted Poppies because I wanted to create either a splatter or flourishes, and I ended up going with the splatter, but I also used the Stitch Rectangle dies. So let's get into how I made this card. So I started out with one piece of eight and a half by eleven Whisper White cardstock, and I cut it in half at the five or at the four and a quarter, sorry. And then when I scored it at five and a half, it created the A2 size card. And the mat is one quarter inch smaller, four by five and a quarter. Now I have some scratch paper, just photocopy paper, that I put this transfer paper onto. So that, I mean, it's so inexpensive. Here it is here. I get it off Amazon and I use a Cricut machine. So I use it to transfer all my vinyl. But I find that if I put it on cardstock, I can stamp on it and then peel it off and I can use it for masking. And it is the cheapest alternative that I can find for masking, aside from just stamping on photocopy paper, right? So I'm going to take my um, stitched rectangle die and I'm going to cut it out of this actual transfer paper because I want to create a frame for my card. So I'm going to go cut that out on my Big Shot off screen. And here it is here. So as you can see, I've created a frame. Now, this stuff is not sticky enough to tear paper, but it is sticky enough that it'll stick on itself. So I'm going to kind of struggle a little bit here when I'm peeling it off. But for your smaller pieces, for your regular stamping, you're not going to have an issue with it. And the nice thing is, is you can stick it in your stamp case where you store your stamps and you can reuse it probably five, six, seven times depending on how much uh, you touch it when you are removing it. So it doesn't come with a backing, right? It comes on the roll. So what I do is I use a baby wipe to clean my hands and then I use one of my chamois. I have a chamois dedicated just to my fingers um, to wipe them off so that there's not a lot of natural oils on there. So I'm just getting my stamp together now onto an acrylic block. And then what I'm going to do is I pulled out some copy paper because I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with the gray or a black background. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit here because if I speed it up, then I'm going to save some time, right? So what I wanted to determine was how the silver was going to look on the gray or which gray did I use? I used... Um, I used the basic gray. So I wanted to see what the silver was going to look like against basic gray or against black and which one was going to make it pop more because, of course, it's a one layer card, right? So earlier I said I didn't know if I was going to go with the uh, splatter or the flourish out of the Parisian background, uh, sorry, Parisian beauty set, set. So I decided to go with the splatter. So I'm just using a piece of copy paper and I'm just stamping this all on there. The top half is the basic gray, the bottom half is the memento. And then I've got the splatter and I'm just going to emboss it really quick on that copy paper and I'm going to have a look at it to see which color really makes that silver pop. And I ended up actually going with the black because I just found that it popped better. Now I know you probably can't see it on the video, but the bottom was the black and it really did make that silver pop a lot more. So now I've gone and grabbed my uh, copy paper with the transfer paper on it. And I did say earlier it is never it never tears the paper. However, this is the first time I used it with a die. And I guess because copy paper is so thin and flimsy, 
it did kind of like you can see a little bit of orange there around where the die cut but you know what I wasn't too stressed out about it so now that my background or my mat is all prepped with the masking paper I'm gonna go ahead and start creating my background now in my last video I mentioned that this stamp reminds me of our old um, retired wood mounted background the French script so that was kind of the effect I was going for. I kind of wish that it had been a little wider, but you know what? We got to make it work, right? So I flipped it upside down so that I could kind of position a little better. That worked better for me. And then I'm going to put my stamp on here. And the goal is to only have that splatter background behind where the actual tower is. I didn't want it over the whole card, right? I just wanted it to kind of showcase and frame out the Eiffel Tower. So I'm gonna play around here a little bit. And the key to these splatters is what I do anyhow, is to kind of turn the stamp a little bit, stamp it with a lot of ink, and then stamp it a couple times without re-inking it, and you get a different effect, right? So you've got your dark and your light, and if you move the stamp around, then it's a little bit more organic and it doesn't look like you used one stamp to create that whole thing, right? So I, I know my my uh, card is a little bit low. I'm still struggling trying to get my camera positioned properly, so I apologize for that. But I'm just going to keep putting some more background on there and the stamp until I have the desired effect that I want. And that looks pretty good to me. So now I'm going to grab the postal cancellation lines, waves. That's what they look like to me. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's what they are. If they're not, please let me know. And then the little uh, circle postage. So I'm just kind of going to position those where I think I want them. And I started out with this sentiment, and you can probably see that's not the sentiment I ended up going with, but I'm just kind of playing around here trying to figure out where I want things. I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus, and you'll probably notice I've got a whole lot of things in there. And if you want me to do a video on all of those things I have in there and why I have them in there, I'd be more than happy to do that. But the most important thing I have in there is my um, acetate that I printed a graph paper on, and then I laminated it because the ink wouldn't stick because of my printer. I guess I don't have the right ink. And I actually recently. Um, laminated the paper that we put in our uh, Stamparatus. I saw, I think it was Cards and Coffee Time, she had mentioned that she laminates hers for her Misty. And I thought, what a brilliant idea. So I did that. So I'm just showing you here how uh, easy it is to peel off that transfer paper and then stick it right in your stamp case uh, that you, you that, well, I store my um, dies in a stamp case. Um, I don't know where you store yours, but you know what? put it on a piece of acetate, put it somewhere because you can reuse that a ton of times. So I'm going to get my background ready to stamp now. And I do have that laminated acetate graph paper over top. And the reason why I, I use it out of habit, because if you are going to stamp something and then reposition that dirty stamp on whatever project you're stamping on, you can put that acetate down, put the stamp on that and still see where it's going to go and you won't dirty up your project, right? So I didn't really need it there, but I use it out of habit, so that's why it was there. Now I'm going to use our Versamark, which is a sticky type of ink that will allow the embossing powder to stick to it. And I'm just going to rub my thumb over there to make sure I get a good impression. And I'm going to stamp it twice just for good measure. Um, it's a habit I have on regular cardstock. On watercolor paper, I'll normally stamp it three or four times. And then I've got that brayer tool, and I'm just going to roll that across there for even pressure. Uh, I find that uh, I get I get good even pressure when I use my brayer tool. So I'm going to bring in my silver embossing powder and I'm going to use my bead tray. And I like the bead tray because I don't have enough embossing powder to put them in sandwich containers or anything else like that, like a lot of other people do. So I have to use the little bottle and I find that the bead tray helps catch it. And I actually just ordered a pink one. So I'm super, super excited about that. So I'm just going to use my little paintbrush that I keep in my bead tray. I have a whole bunch of little tools I keep in there, like that little spoon I got at the dollar store and whatnot. And the paintbrush allows me to just kind of maybe wipe off a couple little grains of um, embossing powder where I may not want them. 
Now I'm going to let my heat gun heat up a little bit here because I find that when the heat gun is hot, it embosses a lot quicker and then you don't get your paper curling and, you know, bending out of shape and whatnot. And I probably should have heated it up a little bit longer than I did because it really wasn't quite as hot as I wanted it to be. So I'm going to do the back of the paper just to kind of prevent that pilling and the warping of my paper there. And then it's starting to go here right now. So that's good. So I'm just going to lift this up here to show you how gorgeous this is. I mean, I love this Eiffel Tower. I love Paris. Anything to do with Paris is a dream. I would love to go, but nevertheless. So I'm going to bring out those other two stamps now. I'm going to use my embossing tool. Um, it's no different than the embossing buddy. The embossing buddy normally sits in my craft cart. I may or may not pull it out. I can't remember if I did, but this one just sits in a bottle and it sits right on my desk. So um, it's just an easy grab. The embossing buddy I keep in a little um, film container, you know, for um, uh, the old film rolls we used to get. So I, I think it might be in my, my craft cart still for my classes. So for here, what's important is the Versamark pen. Now, if you don't have a Versamark pen, that's totally okay. You can pull out a paintbrush and pull out some Versamark reading curve and put it in the lid there. And then you can use the paintbrush to actually paint on your Versamark because you want a good amount of Versamark um, down there so that you can get a really fair amount of embossing powder. So there's the Versamark reinker, and I'm just using a, a brush that I use for um, just not important painting. And I'm just going to paint that on there. And I'm going to play around with it a little bit because I want to make sure that I've got enough Versamark on there that it's going to have enough embossing powder to cover the whole stamp, which I don't at this point. So you can probably have a hard time seeing it on the video, but in person, you'll be able to see that it looks like a watermark when you're painting that on there. You'll be able to see it pretty clearly. So I'm going to add some more and I'm going to double check and I don't think I have enough. So I'm going to kind of go. Now, here's the thing. When you're adding this, the stippling motion is important. You don't want a nice, perfect round circle. So just kind of stipple it on, tap your brush up and down so that you create a rough edge of Versamark, okay? So the other important thing here is time. You have to really kind of be speedy when you're doing this because you don't want your embossing powder to cool. You want it nice and hot. So I'm going to do a four-step process. I'm going to add the embossing powder, and then I'm going to heat it. And once it's all heated and melted, I'm going to quickly just grab that pot, and I'm going to dump it right on top of the already heated and melted embossing powder. So you can see here... I'm just double checking that that's big enough for my stamp, which it is. Now, the nice thing is, is every time you dump your embossing powder on this, you're going to get little flyaways, little pieces and little um, grains, if you will, of embossing powder. And you want those on there because that's what's going to create this kind of really cool background effect for you to reverse emboss that stamp in. Now, you can see I've got the stamp on the Versamark because it's key that you have a good amount of Versamark on that stamp. It's nice and greasy, if you will, so that your stamp won't stick in the embossing powder and stay there. So here I come in with my second, second round of embossing powder, and the dogs decided they want to play, so you can probably hear them. As soon as I'm done this, I will lock them out of the room. So there's the third round of embossing powder and I didn't speed this part up because I really wanted you to see what this process is now I had some flyaways that were not cohesive to where I wanted them to be so I just used that little paintbrush and wiped those off so here we go we're going to heat this and you can see how fast this heats up because your heat tool is hot right so there's our <laughs> My mom's dog is here right now. She's on vacation and she just gets my dog going so bad. I apologize. So as soon as this as soon as this fourth round is done, 
I will lock her out of the room. So now I'm going to heat up that, uh, that um, last round of embossing powder. And I'm using my left hand for the gun because the right hand is my dominant hand. And I want to make sure that that's the hand that I very slowly and steadily depress that stamp in there. Okay, I got rid of the dog. So it's really important that you are very slow when you depress your stamp in there because your stamp is very greasy with the Versa mark and it will want to slide. So look at that. Is that not awesome? That is so amazing. I love that effect for sure. And there's so many stamps that you can do that with, guys. There's so many flower stamps. And just think of those little stamps that you want to use as an embellishment and an accent and just throw them on your card. And if you end up posting it anywhere online, come back and give me a link because I would love to see what you came up with. So as you noticed there, I was playing around with that sentiment and it just wasn't it wasn't what I wanted. So I had stampers block. I'd been here a while. So I decided to take a break and it occurred to me to use the itty bitty greetings and um, use a slimmer sentiment so that I could put it over top of the Eiffel Tower. So I cut out some scrap paper out of my whisper white folder. And this is where that acetate that I have the graph paper printed on works really, really well. Because this is a clean stamp, I can't see through it. And as you can see, it didn't stamp exactly where I wanted it to stamp. So I can reposition that little piece of paper there underneath my um, acetate, and then I can get it to go exactly where I want it to go. And then take the acetate off. I'm going to reposition the uh, magnet there, and then stamp it. And as you can, oh, Okay, I guess you could, don't get to see. <laughs> I cut that out, but it stamped exactly perfect where I wanted it to be. So now I'm going to do what I call depression embossing, where you take whatever it is that you want embossed and you depress it into your Versamark pad. And I use my bone folder to help push it down and my tweezers to hold it. Um, because if you don't have silver paper, which I have some silver paper in my stash, but it's not stamping up and I wanted everything to match perfectly, which is one of the things I love about Stampin' Up! is everything coordinates so beautifully. All the colors go together and everything matches. And that's what I was going for on this card. So the, with the depression embossing, you just depress whatever it is you want, emboss it, and then you've got a perfect coordinating embellishment, or in this case, a background for me to put my sentiment on. So I'm just placing it, making sure that I have enough silver embossing there. And I'm going to trim off some of the front, the front part of the sentiment and get an idea for where I need to cut that. And then I'm just going to use the Tombow liquid glue to glue that onto the background. And the nice thing about the, the liquid glue as opposed to the snail adhesive is I want to make sure that I get a perfect uh, amount of background I want that centered, I guess you could say, perfectly on that background. So if I use the liquid glue, then I won't have a problem making sure that I can slide that around and center it. So I'm going to put a little bit on there. I'm going to close the cap because that stuff dries so fast, which less is more. So the more glue you put on there, it's going to squish all out and get all yucky, right? So the, the least amount of glue that you use is better because it dries quicker. So I think I'm just wiping off my background there. And then I'm going to glue this right on the top. And then I'm going to place it on the mat and just kind of trim off the edge so that it matches perfectly in alignment with the edge of my mat. So I'm just loving the way that that looks. Now I did leave a tail on there because I wanted to do the, the black and pink ribbon that you probably saw in the beginning. Um, I am going to put some foam behind this sentiment. I had considered just putting it flat because I, like I said, I challenged myself to do a one layer card and come on, I was a pretty good girl. This is, this is an amazing card for one layer, but if I don't pop that up, then it's not going to lay flat when I use the ribbon and stuff behind it. And I'm kind of playing with this here and I'm like, no, this black is just way too stark. For this card because it's got a really nice soft feel to it so I went to my stash and I pulled out that twine I think that was the November paper pumpkin you know the one with all the tags 
And I had so much of it left. Like Stampin' Up! was so generous with the amount of twine they gave us. So I'm still using it, still in my stash. So I figured here, um, I'm going to speed the video up because this was painful. <laughs> this was so painful. Okay, I hope this isn't too fast, but I messed around with this ribbon for an exuberant amount of time. It was, like I said, it was so painful. So I wanted to have the pink and the silver, and then I wanted to put tie them in a, in a bow. And trying to tie those two in a bow just frustrated me to no end. So then I thought, well, let me wrap them around the actual sentiment. They didn't look right together. So then I tried the silver with a pink bow. That didn't look right. So I thought, I'm going to do a silver bow out of the twine. And I'm going to take this pink ribbon. And I'm just going to wrap it around. I know it's a little low right now, but you'll see it in a second. I'm going to wrap it around on an angle. Because you know those um, overseas envelopes? The um, I don't even know what they're called. But they have those angled stripes on the top. I haven't seen them in decades, but because it's a scent with love and it's got the postage kind of feel going on it, I thought if I angle the ribbon, it'll kind of give that postage-y feel like the envelope. I don't know. That's what I was going for anyway. So I've got the bow there with the twine and that I like. So I'm really happy with that. So now I want to make sure that my angle ribbon stays perfectly where I want it to go. So I'm going to come in with our tear and tape adhesive and put that on there first so that as I wrap it around the background for my sentiment, it is sure to not move. So I'm going to flip that over and get that ribbon kind of started where I think it should go. Wrap it around a couple times. And I know it's a little low. I'm going to work on that for sure making sure that uh, everything I'm doing is in the screen. So I'm just going to place it there just to see, make sure I've got enough and I had a little bit too much. So I kind of unwound it there one round. Actually, I started all over again. <laughs> I didn't I actually remember now. I started over again because I didn't think that the ribbon was close enough to the actual sentiment. So I'm going to pull out some foam strips because I want to pop that sentiment up. Now, I could have probably just put this flat down, but I had already resolved in my mind that I was using multiple layers of ribbon and I was going to pop it up. So I guess that's why I just kind of went with that. I wasn't even thinking about it at this point. But if you want to challenge yourself to do a one layer card, then absolutely there's no need to put the foam strip on there to pop that up. But I chose to do that. And then I've got my, my ribbon there. I'm going to cut it off. And then I'm going to peel off the release paper for my foam and position that right in the middle there of the, uh, the tower. Well, not quite in the middle, but in the spot that I figured it should go. I'm going to trim off the edge. And there we have it. Now, I was looking at the card. And, um, well, actually, let me back up. I'm getting ahead of myself. I did do the bow out of that twine from the paper pumpkin. And I'm going to use one of our little glue dots to put that on there. So. I'm going to pull out the glue dots and I'm going to use the take your pick just to kind of make it a little ball of um, sticky goodness to put that that little bow on. And I'm going to stick that to the back of the knot and I'm going to use my fingernail to help me get that off because, of course, it wanted to stick to my take your pick. Right. So there we go. And I kind of like that. So now that I've got everything together, I'm thinking about the fact that I'm going to mail this card. And I didn't want to use the foam strips because I find that the mail is so harsh on our cards that with the, the foam strips, um, it'll leave depressions in the empty spots behind your mat where you don't have any foam. So I elected to not use those. And I'm using some fun foam that I got at Walmart. Now, I couldn't find this, the, the fun foam that has the sticky back. So I just used the extreme adhesive that ran out on me here. So I have to refill it. I wish that we still carried this. We don't. And I can't link it to you guys because it directly competes with Stampin' Up's adhesives they currently carry. So I'm sorry for that. But I use it because it really helps that fun foam stick perfectly. And now I can raise up the, the mat of my card 
and not worry about what the mail is going to do when it gets sent to the recipient, right? So some of that extreme adhesive on both sides. Now here, I was going to put it down and I couldn't get that silver paper out of my mind. And I thought, you know, I could grab another piece of white and I could emboss all the edges in silver. But at this point, I was running short on time. It was getting really late. And as you can see, there's that silver paper. And I just loved the way it made it pop because at this point, it's not a one layer card anymore. So I'm just going with it. I want to make it look the best it can be. So even though you have a vision in mind when you start your card, it doesn't mean that that's got to be the end result 100%, right? So, you know, you do you and change it up the way you want it to. So, yeah, I decided, I, I'm looking back and forth, but I decided I've, I've got to have that silver paper in there for sure. So I snuck it in. And I'm super, super pleased with the way the card turned out. So I can't really be too upset at that. And I'm still playing here. <laughs> I'm still in my mind going, do I use the silver paper in my stash that's not stamping up? But yeah, I'm going to do it. And you know, you're probably going to find in a lot of my videos that I use stuff that's not stamping up. I mean, if you saw my room, I have so much stuff. I mean, I should really purge, but why? Because it's all got a place, right? I'm not overflowing yet. So you may see from time to time, I throw something in that, that's not stamping up. But you know what? You do you and I do me and we'll all be happy, right? So now I've got it all taped up and I'm going to put that on my card base. And I always do it from the side. I do it in, um, what is that, landscape mode, landscape view, because I can kind of see all the sides. I get a better view that way so that I know it's going on properly, right? So I'm just going to squish down all of that foam there. And I just love the way this card turned out. I was so, so happy and pleased with it. I did decide to sneak in one of our metallic pearls. I felt like it just needed a little teeny bit of bling because there really wasn't any bling on there. So um, the silver in that perfectly matches our embossing powder. So I'm very, very, very happy with the way that this card turned out. I think it's classy and elegant. It's um, the perfect little way to, to send someone something with love, right? So again, I want to go back to the uh, mention where I mentioned about making a video on the um, Stamparatus and everything I have in there. By all means, if you want to see it, let me know. And I'm kind of starved for ideas right now outside of just making cards and tutorials, uh, ideas for videos. So if you have any ideas, throw them at me. I'd be more than happy if it's something that you're passionate about and I'm passionate about it too. I would love to put out a video for you on that. So with that being said, thank you so much for tuning in today. And until I see you again, happy stamping. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.